It would be a huge understatement to say that the Ultra HDMI hasn't had some of the worst availability of a mod basically since I've gotten into retro console modding. There have only been a handful of times that it's been available for purchase, usually on GameTech's website. There have also been seven rounds of group buys since 2018 on the Shmups forum. The first person to sign up in the most recent group buy signed up in March of 2019, and they just recently got their mod. That's almost two years that people have had to wait in this group buy for this mod. I signed up for the group buy in the middle of last year, but the only reason I have mine today is because GameTech got an order of 200 of them and I was lucky enough to get one. But none of that matters though, I finally got an Ultra HDMI. Let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to install one. I've gone ahead and take the jumper pack out and the top shield off. Let's take this heatsink off so we can get to the motherboard underneath. You don't need to take off every single one of these screws, just the ones around the edge here. Don't forget the two little screws here and the supposed to be two screws in the front here by the LED. Maybe we have to take these two ones out here too. Now with the heatsink off, you just have to unscrew where the multi-out goes and where the power supply adapter plugs in. Let's go ahead and take the motherboard out. I'm gonna be using the no cut piece from Laser Bear so that I don't have to cut a hole in the original N64 plastic. There really isn't much to this mod besides soldering these flex cables. I got the Ultra HDMI that has the optional DAC here, so this smaller flex cable is gonna be for that. But let's go ahead and worry about this big flex cable first. I'm gonna be using the J tip on my soldering iron to do this flex cable soldering. We're gonna be soldering the flex cable to the right side of this RPC chip. This piece on the right side here is gonna get soldered somewhere else, not on the RPC chip. So we're really concerned with this main big section on the left of the flex cable. If you look in the board, there's a white dot here next to the one pin. We're gonna be putting the rightmost pin of the flex cable here, one pin to the left of that white dot there. First things first, go ahead and put a really tiny spot of solder onto your soldering iron and add some flux. Go ahead and line up the flex cable with the pins. It should be touching the bottom outside edge of the pins, not sitting on the pins directly. Then we're gonna use that spot of solder we put in our iron iron to tack down the right side of this flex cable. Once we have this right side tacked down, go ahead and do the exact same thing to the far left side. Basically, we're just gonna keep repeating that until all of those middle pieces of the flex cable are soldered. If you have a little solder bridge like I do on this side, just take a clean piece of solder braid and hold it on there for a few seconds. I could have kept playing with it a little bit more, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's take care of these two little flex cable pieces. There are two capacitors right here. There's one here and one there. Let's go ahead and tin the points that are closest to this flex cable. Go ahead and solder each flex cable to the capacitor. Let's go ahead and fold this flex cable. We're gonna have to fold it at a 90 degree angle right about here so that these two pieces kind of stick off to the right. And then again, right about here so that the flex cable ends up right around there. The soldering of this long flex cable piece is dependent on what CPU version you have. I have a CPU 04, so I can solder this long piece here to pin 16 on this side of this PIF chip. Go ahead and tin pin 16. I'll leave a link by the way to the installation instructions to figure out where you're gonna need to solder this wire depending on your CPU version. Then we can go ahead and solder this long wire to pin 16 of the PIF. Now this other short wire is gonna go to pin 27 of the PIF chip, which is right near the last pin over here. That's all the soldering for the main flex chip. 
Now let's worry about the soldering for this DAC flex cable. Go ahead and flip the board over. This flex cable is gonna get soldered over the multi-out pins up here. But first things first, let's go ahead and add some fresh solder to these pins. Okay, now we'll place the flex cable over, add some flux, and try to solder one of the pins. I'm just gonna go ahead and test for continuity to make sure I didn't bridge any of those pins. Nope, looks pretty good. I'm gonna put a diagram up on the screen for some components that need to be removed at the bottom of the board here. But as you can see on my console, it doesn't have any of those components populated. If your console does, make sure to remove every single one of the ones that is in this highlighted picture by adding some fresh solder to both sides, heating it up with the soldering iron going back and forth and wiggling the component off the board. All right, that's it for the soldering. Let's go ahead and put this thing in the case. Before we do that, we have to go ahead and fold this DAC cable. First fold is gonna be right about here, and the next fold is gonna be right about here. Don't go crazy with this because we might have to tweak it when we put this in the case. Next we're going to take the bottom of the case and put the no cut piece in. Now here's something that I'm not really sure about. The kit comes with two pieces of foam here and I know this piece is supposed to go underneath the multi out and we'll get to that in a second. But the second piece I'm not really sure where it goes. The piece that goes under the multi out is supposed to rest on top of the mod so that it doesn't move when you try to plug cables into it. So I can only assume that this other piece does the same thing. The only good place I can see to put it is right here. So this is going to pinch the mod from the underside whereas the other piece of foam pinches it from the top. Please leave me a comment if you actually know where this piece of foam goes. It's really hard to find information about this mod right now. Okay, go ahead and put it right there. Now that's pretty good, especially with this no cut piece. It leaves a little bit of cushion, but there's plenty of room in here so that it's not gonna do any damage to the mod. Before I put the mod in, I'm gonna put this DAC piece in. Kind of goes together like that. And now I'm gonna put it over the no cut piece. And I'm gonna put that other piece of foam on. It's gonna go right here over the multi-out wiring. Just like that. If we try to put this other shield on, it gets in the way of the mod once the no cut piece is in there. So I'm gonna leave this piece out of my console. Go ahead and put the board in. Careful not to lose our ribbon cable. And now we're gonna go ahead and put this DAC flex cable in. And now last but not least, we'll put the other flex cable in. Just like that. Now just because the foam is in there, it kind of looks like the DAC piece here might be hitting the board. But if you look in there, even with this board all the way down, it looks like there's plenty of room between the N64 board and the DAC. So I'm not really worried about that. Just another note about reassembly. When this flex cable is here, it's gonna hit this piece of this top shield here, kind of like that. So we're gonna go ahead and bend this piece of shield here flat so that it's kind of sticking out like this one is. So now when this piece goes down, that flex cable doesn't get pinched. But now before I put everything back together, I'm gonna go ahead and test this console, both the analog output as well as the HDMI. Everything looks okay through the HDMI output. What you're seeing here is the fraction sharp pixels mode in the picture settings. It seems to make the picture take up most of the screen. But if we go into the Ultra HDMI menu and change to the integer sharp pixels mode, you'll see that the video only takes up about three quarters of the screen at 1080p. I was kind of expecting integer to take up more of the screen, but the Ultra HDMI is only doing line 2x mode in this integer sharp pixels mode. Now you're seeing the analog output through my OSSC in line 2x. To me, this looks just as good and it takes up most of the screen. I'm not sure what's going on with the Ultra HDMI integer scaling mode, but I just changed mine to fractions and I can live with that. Give this video a like if it helped you out and get subscribed because I do mod installation videos for all the new retro mods. I'll see you in the next video.